Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale again and today we're gonna do it again guys We're gonna do one of these card bounty challenges Basically, Bren Chong and I host these 1k 1,000 person tournaments every single evening at 7 p.m. Eastern time And then what I do is I throw in an extra card bounty usually once or maybe twice a week Where I pick actually let you guys pick uh, via Twitter polls what card you want these guys to use in order to be entered into a side bet to win $100 if you can place top three using the deck throughout the entire tournament. So this is the third or fourth, this is the fourth one I've done now. I did uh, Elite Barbarians, I have that video up. I did Tornado, I have that video up. I did the Mirror Rage Spell one. I recorded it, but then my commentary kind of got messed up and no one ended up really finishing that high using mirror and uh, mirror and rage so I didn't end up uploading that one but this is the fourth that I've done now and it's with as you can see balloon and a lot of these top players in the tournament right now you can see I started with about 20 minutes left in the tournament started recording that is and a lot of these guys are using the balloon actually really successfully and a lot of the top players right now are using a variation of freeze and balloon and believe it or not quite a few of these guys have elixir pump in their deck as well so you can see right now on the screen we have a head-to-head -head battle with 78 viewers right now it's balloon versus balloon now I think it is kind of entertaining to see players play unpopular cards but beyond that I hope to do these tournaments to prove to some of you guys that you can have success using non meta decks and non meta cards so hopefully one of these guys finishes in the top three maybe even more than one of these guys and uh, I'll pay them a hundred bucks so so let's see what happens and as always guys we're definitely going to include some tips and strategy for using balloons if you know maybe you want to dust yours off as well I'm sure it's been a long time since many of you guys have used a balloon so aside from just the novelty of the challenge and seeing a card that we're not used to seeing at the top of a tournament uh, hopefully we'll answer the question is the balloon viable again in tournament play at tournament level standards uh, and the reason it wasn't as viable before is is basically there's really one culprit right it's the mega minion the mega minion is such a difficult hard counter to the balloon it's actually an elixir uh, trade that benefits the defender but it, it takes down the balloon so easily and, and why it's so difficult is because you can't follow up that balloon with a direct damage spell such as a fireball or arrows I mean the only thing that works is obviously a lightning to take out that mega minion that's hammering away at your balloon uh, unlike the minions for example or minion horde behind the balloon you can just arrow them and it's not a big deal uh, so the mega minion did take a 15% or so DPS decrease a nerf on the last balance update and maybe just maybe with that little bit of the extra damage nerf it probably takes a couple extra hits on that mega minion to take down the balloon maybe that's enough time to actually get it to your towers now especially if you combine it in an already pretty decent air deck and look at this guys we are now approaching the sixth in final minute of this match here a lot of viewers and it looks like it looks like Jason I don't know I mean I was gonna say that Jason is in trouble here but with these balloon decks I mean you know guys and look at this this could be it right here if you can get the balloon to the tower oh no wow that was good defense there by the guy at the top don't know how to say his name but uh, yeah if you can get the balloon to the tower there and he was able to cycle really really quickly back to that balloon there and uh, you know balloon freeze that's a lethal combination balloon freeze on the tower you get it down and it's done it's game it's game over it's G so it looks like this is actually going to end in a tie. What a way to start out this tournament with a big tie like this. Uses the freeze spell defensively, and he's going to loco that is, you know, and a tournament that's only an hour long, if you actually lose, or excuse me, if you tie, draw on one match, that can actually really hurt you if you were if you were high in the leaderboard. So Jewish Panda using, uh, I think, a bowler deck. You can see the decks, the top decks over here. I'll be sure, however this one ends up, this tournament ends up, I'll be sure to share with you guys what the winning decks were. I'm just trying to get an, an account of who's actually using Balloon. So we're going to follow local Jason, Loco Jason for another match or two, and then we'll kind 
kind of reassess things and look who's at the top of the leaderboard and who may or may not be using the balloon. So there goes the balloon in the right lane and right away the freeze spell is dropped and again, even with that mega minion there, thanks to that freeze spell, the balloon actually gets almost three hits off on that tower, certainly doing a lot of damage. And look at this, a pretty meta deck at the top there by J-Rox coming in with the uh, the graveyard, the giant graveyard on that left tower. Ooh, the mini pick almost gets to that right tower and look at that, a lot of damage done by that graveyard. You know what, the graveyard, you have to be careful Anytime you see your opponent playing a giant to start off a match, you just gotta guess that the graveyard's gonna be coming at this point. Same thing goes with bowlers. So a tip for you guys. I mean, I I just lost a match on ladder play to uh, Ben's Light, and I was going for 5K. It was my personal best. I would have gotten it if I beat him but he caught me off guard on that very first graveyard. You know, obviously I did have a little bit of elixir to defend, but just not the right cards. I went and cycled my cards offensively, the cards that I needed, such as archers, for example, to defend against that graveyard, and I kind of screwed myself over, you know? So be sure, when you see that giant, you're ready for the graveyard to come soon afterwards here. So, oh, this is actually a pretty nice defensive freeze there by Jason. It doesn't look like it was that uh, effective there at first glance, but it did give that mega minion in time to take down the giant, and that would have been trouble otherwise. Uh, you can see that uh, J Rocks used the graveyard there. Not sure that might have been a little bit too aggressive, didn't do much damage, if any, at all. And it left himself kind of vulnerable in terms of an elixir disadvantage. He has the princess in the left lane, used the fireball, but uh, there's the freeze again. You got to be ready for the freeze there, but good drop on that mega minion. But guess what? Tower is down. So Jason does score first here. The elixir pump really benefiting him at this point in the uh, the opposite tower. In Elixir Pump, we're starting to see more and more of Elixir Pump again in these tournaments. And you know what? I actually didn't do a video on the most recent balance changes, so let me take a moment and talk briefly about the Elixir Pump and my thoughts on it right now. So you guys know the buff that they gave the Elixir Pump. Basically what they did was they increased the duration, or excuse me, they decreased the duration that the Elixir Pump is live on the in the arena, and they increased the production per tick or whatever. So basically, it's just producing elixir at a faster rate. You're still getting eight elixir out of the elixir pump in total, so you're netting two elixir off of the entire pump considering it costs six elixir. So what does that actually mean? And what does it mean for a defender? Well, me personally, I still like to fireball an elixir pump if I know I'm at a positive elixir advantage and the situation calls for it, right? So maybe I'm sitting at 10 elixir, I don't have an obvious card to play. Otherwise, I'd just be like splitting archers or something like that. I'll go ahead and I'll fireball the elixir pump all by itself next to a tower. I'm losing one elixir on that trade because my fireball costs four. What I'm gonna do is prevent them from getting five of their eight elixir out of that elixir pump. So basically it's costing me one elixir to fireball their tower. So for that damage I'm getting out of my fireball, I'll actually take that. So I would advise in some situations to just go ahead and fireball or poison an elixir pump all by itself next to a tower. Now of course, if you can get more value or hold out for more value, you should do that as well. So for example, let's say I'm sitting at seven elixir, I'm thinking about maybe fireballing, or maybe I'm at 10 elixir, and I'm thinking about maybe fireballing an elixir pump. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just split my archers anyway and I'll see if my opponent you know happens to play something near their elixir pump so I can hit three targets the tower the elixir pump and whatever they happen to play heck even if it's like a giant or something I'll still go ahead and fireball because I'd rather do damage to the tower the the giant and the elixir pump rather than just the elixir pump and the tower if that makes any sense to you guys so the same thing goes with poison so fireball and poison you're definitely losing one elixir on on the trade, but if you can get one more target in there, it's definitely great value in terms of a, a direct damage spell to use against the Elixir Pump. Now, the value in the Elixir Pump has increased slightly, but not too crazy. So, I would only use the Elixir Pump in really expensive decks. I'm talking decks that will cost over 4.5 Elixir average, and maybe even, or, you know, near the 5 range. So, if we see a day where the P.E.K.K.A. gets another buff, for example, or if the Golem 
comes back, shifts back into the, the extreme meta right now. It's, it's still kind of in the meta, but you know what I'm saying. Basically, these really expensive cards, uh, then I would definitely consider adding an Elixir Pump if you want to do an expensive Lava Hound deck. That's why you're seeing all these Lava Hound players who are also rolling with the Balloon. I mean, that's a pretty expensive combination. Just the Balloon, obviously, and the Lava Hound is going to run you 12 Elixir, and then if you're going to combo that with other expensive cards, you know, it does behoove you to add the Elixir Pump to your deck. So enough talk about Elixir Pump, but you know, some people have asked if I like the card more now, and that's kind of my opinions on it. I still would Fireball it. It doesn't change the amount of production. It's still eight Elixir that you're getting out of that uh, Elixir Pump. Now, you know what? I think that, uh, I think there's a graphic going around. I shared it on Twitter maybe about a month now ago, but it still holds valid. It still holds true, and that is the value you can get off of direct damage spells versus an Elixir Pump. So I'm kind of just, you can see, just scrolling around the leaderboard here in this tournament trying to find out who else might be playing the Balloon. And I know that Logic is actually a really good player, and he's actually a very underrated player, if I do say so myself, in the game right now. He does very well, and a lot of these tournaments, he actually out uh, outranks or outfinishes a lot of the top players. So he himself is a top player, in my mind at least. And uh, just because he hasn't won any huge tournaments, that's why you might not recognize his name. But he does have a YouTube channel, and I'll go Go ahead and link that for you guys and it looks like he's also playing a balloon deck so let's see how he plays the balloon deck again you can see he's using minor as well as a baby dragon in combination with lava hound mega minion and a balloon somewhere in here because we saw that but otherwise not sure he takes down that left tower does a pretty good job he does take some damage to both of his towers in exchange for doing so but that's what you want obviously take down their towers i mean there's a lot of time left in this match you can see he's playing tombstone and we know one card is Balloon. The other card, I'm guessing it has to be some sort of a direct damage spell. I mean, I just looked at his deck, but I already forgot. But I'm going to assume it's Zap, because Zap is so key in any Lava Hound deck. You need to be able to reset the Inferno Tower if you need to buy more time. Of course, it could be Lightning as well, but in this deck, without Elixir Pump, at this cost, I would highly doubt that he's playing Lightning. So I'm going to guess it's Zap spell, and we'll see if that comes in handy uh, for him later on in this tournament. Now, I should mention that actually his deck, now that I look at it, is a pretty cool deck if you guys want to try something a little bit different. It has Baby Dragon in it, it has a uh, Minor Balloon, and it just looks like to be a lot of fun. You know, the thing about the deck is, is it's obviously very powerful offensively, the Lava Hound and the Balloon being the win conditions, but even defensively, it's pretty decent. I mean, considering it doesn't have any big defensive structures, only the Tombstone here, but he's able to take down this Royal Giant pretty easily using the, uh, the combination of uh, Tombstone and Mega Minion there, putting some archers to kind of add to it while he goes aggressively at that right tower, and he does get the balloon to the tower. I think the balloon got one shot off on that tower, but look at this. When you have a balloon, a lava hound, a baby dragon all coming at you in the lane, that's that's very difficult to stop, you know, and then a Mega Minion to add insult to injury here, and it looks like he's going to be uh, GG right here. Logic's going to pull off this very nice win here. An interesting deck. Again, guys, if you have have the Miner and Lava Hound, go ahead and give a deck like this a try. Now, if you're trying out a new deck, a brand new deck, this is what I do at least, is I like to enter a classic challenge. I normally do grand challenges, but if you guys are the type who can, you know, afford to enter a classic challenge, I like kind of getting to know the cards and the tournament level standards with a new deck, not expecting to get 12 wins, but just expecting to kind of get a feel, a handle for the deck, how it runs, what the popular, you know, counters that I need to to be aware of what it's weak against if I have to maybe make some substitutions. I like kind of using the classic challenge. It's kind of like a training ground for new decks that I'm trying out. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop back into this here. You can see not a lot of time left on the clock in this tournament, and it looks like Logic being in fourth place. I think I'm just going to stick with Logic here because I do want him to actually... I'm kind of rooting for him. I want to see if anybody else real quick is playing a balloon here in the top. And it doesn't, I, I did see a lot of names, but it looks like they must have taken some losses. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop into Logic's match and just follow him throughout the end of this tournament and see what he can do. So, you know, you guys know that, you know, I don't want to pay $100 to three people, but I don't mind spending it on one guy if he's able to complete the challenge. So I'm going to be pulling for Logic. I actually want Logic to, uh, to take first place here. So a pretty aggressive play at the beginning of the match. You can see, oh, look at that. I mean, oh, 
it, that was crazy. I love that. I love seeing the lava hound, the balloon, the baby dragon. I mean, what do you do as a defender there? Obviously, JT just doing the best he possibly can, but it's going to be tower down. That's such a strong combination. All JT did was basically put that furnace uh, in the opposite lane, heading towards the opposite lane, and then Logic totally punished him in the right lane, just dropping the, the proverbial trifecta there. The lava hound, boom. The, the uh, baby dragon and the balloon. I mean, what do you do? What do you do as a defender against that? That's very difficult to stop, and that's one of the reasons I think that you can, in this meta, actually have success with one of these balloon decks. If you combo it with the lava hound and a push like that, just really, really strong showing there by Logic. Strong push, and so early in the match, too, that he got that right tower down. Now, now all he has to do is basically defend against this uh, pretty classic at this point. Well, a new classic, if I can say that, a uh, giant graveyard beatdown deck with the Furnace. So Furnace is definitely seeing a ton of action again uh, on ladder comboed with the Royal Giant and in tournament and challenge play comboed with the regular regular giant. So let's see if JT can make a comeback here or if Logic can kind of hold him off at this point. Now, I do want to ask you guys for some feedback. What do you want to see in terms of the next cards that I use on one of these challenges? And should I kind of switch it up? Instead of making it a card bounty challenge, do you guys think I've had some suggestions that I should go a little bit outside the box even further and maybe make it like you have to use an original card from Clash Royale? So, you know, the, the real originals, not like the princess and the ice wizard. I'm talking like the original cards that were existed only when the game was released almost one year ago so that's going to lead me to my second question of the day two questions for you guys today a lot to ask of you guys number one is how long have you been playing so far i mean the game is almost a year old and congratulations to supercell it won google plays game of the year award and that should make us all feel good because we helped it get there by playing i mean it's such an active game and there's always tons of players out in matchmaking, you know, millions, dare I say, millions of players out there, so definitely a big audience, and each and every one of you guys should give yourself a pat on the back right now for uh, for playing the game, so congrats, guys, and congrats to the uh, Clash Royale team as well, but what I want to ask is, how long have you guys been playing? You guys know me, I've been, I've been playing you know, early on. I'm not going to get a little braggatocious there, but, you know, I have been playing very, very early. I was one of the original eight YouTubers who first laid eyes on this game, and then uh, I played it ever since. I love the game. I think it's a fun game. Best game ever, ever to play on the toilet. Calling it right now. Best game ever to play while you're taking a poop. So, uh, what do you guys think? I mean, do you have a better game? Let me know if you do. I'll check it out. But I I'm going to put my money behind Clash Royale. And the other question is, obviously, I need your help on the next bounty. Do you know... I like doing the unpopular cards. I'm not going to stop doing it, but I do need your advice. Should we go with one of these, uh, you know, original cards or something a little bit different? It just, you know, I, you guys always come up with great, innovative ideas. So let me know what you want to see, and I'll include that in the next video. I'll kind of, I'll skim through all the comments on this video, and in my next Clash Royale video, I'll let you know what I thought of some of your ideas. Maybe I'll even screenshot, if I can find the time, some of what I think were the best ideas. So again, here, we're going to follow Logic. Now, Logic needs to win this match, and I'm pulling for him, guys. I hope you guys are, too. Oh, no. Oh, no. He loses his tower really early on, about a minute and 10 seconds into the match, and he needs to win this match if he's going to make top three and get that $100. So... Uh, well, he's doing pretty good offensively on that right tower, so now he has to make the comeback. So now... We're going to have to all root him on. It, you know, even though the, the results are, are long since over, we're going to have to root Logic on. So let's make a deal. And if he loses, uh, we'll still try to come through for him. But let's try to make a deal. Right now, me, you, and Logic, we're going to make a deal. If he can make this comeback, we're all going to go subscribe to him and say, I watched your comeback on Ash's video. Congrats on top three. If he doesn't, we're going to go subscribe to him anyway, and we're going to say, uh, I saw you almost made top three. GG, man. So let's see if we can get a bunch of us going over to his channel. I think it would be pretty cool. Uh, you know, all in all honesty, I haven't watched many of his videos, but I know he is a pretty good guy. I've talked to him a little bit on Twitter, just engaged with him here and there. So I think he probably has good content. So, you know, don't blame me if he doesn't, but 
let's support him anyway. It'd be kind of cool to see like Ash's army kind of all go over there. And he did take down that right tower. So now he might, he might have heard this bet that I'm making with you guys right now because that was a great Lava Hound play. Look at this. Mega Minion, Baby Dragon, Baby Dragon, Lava Hound, Pups swarming the tower. I mean, all Sam can do at this point is drop a Lava Hound of his own to distract. And that actually was the very best play he could have possibly made there. Very nice tombstone distracting both the Mega Minion and the Lava Hound eventually, getting him away from the tower. And this is really going to come down to it here, guys. So logic, time ticks off. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is going to go to overtime right now, guys. Good archer play there. Come on, Logic. Hold on, man. There's the fireball. We knew the fireball was coming there. So now Sam needs to cycle to fireball or defend very, very well here. He needs, excuse me, cycle to graveyard fireball or defend very well here. So he drops the knight, trying to buy some time. He drops the archers, trying to buy some time. But this is not looking good here for Sam at this point. There's his graveyard. You can bet the fireball is going to be coming right afterwards. It's just a matter of time. Who gets to their win condition first? And it's Logic, guys. He does it boom all right so the first comment on this video is going to be me and it's going to be commenting uh with logic's channel go show him some love guys because he did it and we all made a promise so let's let's follow through and see if we can get some ashes army action going on on logic logic's channel it'd be pretty cool if we can all go there and do that uh, again i have no affiliation with him but you know it's just a fun thing to do in the community so Logic made it, guys. $100 in Logic's pocket no matter what. And, uh, oh, look at that. Jewish Panda won first place. Let's take a look at his deck here, guys. It's the classic Bowler Graveyard with the Freeze. Interesting deck, very powerful deck. And Jewish Panda, also a very good player with a YouTube channel, coincidentally. I'll go ahead and link that in the description as well. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Just kind of highlighting the non-meta card, the Balloon. Watching some really skilled players use it and obviously obviously with success. Let's take a quick look through the top 10 decks so you can see what people are winning with. A lot of graveyard play. I mean, almost all these guys are using graveyard. Oh, another balloon deck. Very, very nice. And look who it is. It's DJ from Elite Nation. Love it, man. Shout out to DJ there. And uh, everybody else who finished. Oh, look at that. I mean, a lot of balloon action. Honestly, guys, I'm not lying. In the first 40 minutes before I hit record, we had at one point about five people in the top, like, seven. I'm talking in like not even top 10 top seven using balloons so you can see here a lot of people having success with the balloon card and guys i want to thank you so much for watching all the way till the end i really truly appreciate each and every one of you i hope you have a happy and healthy day thanks for watching guys and as always take care guys